Welcome to another episode of United for a Healthy Stoughton. Today on our show, we're going to be talking about a new program that we piloted this year at the Daw School um, for fifth graders, and it's about the transition from fifth grade to sixth grade. And so I have two wonderful guests with me today, the two Mr. C's, um, Mr. Colantonio from the O'Donnell Middle School and Mr. Cancellari from the Daw School. So welcome, gentlemen, to the show. Thanks Thank for you. coming. Thanks for having us. Great. So. Um, Today we're going to talk a little bit about this program that we were kind of excited to try out at the DAW and um, we'll explain to the viewers a little bit about what this was about and, and um, where it came from. So let's talk a little bit about first, why is the transition from fifth grade to sixth grade kind of a big deal? Why is that an important time in a child's life? Um, from being a former fifth grade teacher and then working with sixth grade prior to that, I feel um, as though academic responsibilities mm -hmm. and kind of a social awareness there's uh, the expectations when you get to sixth grade there's a big leap mm -hmm. yep um, in terms of independence and kind of figuring things out for yourself mm -hmm. um, so I think that transition the expectations they, they really rise quite a bit yeah mm -hmm. and you know when students leave um, what has become the very comfortable elementary school um, environment for them um, and they transition up to um, the big bad middle school. Um, it's just a larger building um, and um, there's a lot more students. Um, they have uh, seven teachers a day, seven sets of expectations. Uh, we do have teams but um, it's, it's um, not only an academic jump for them and it is an academic jump but it's also a big social jump for them mm -hmm. um, and just logistically uh, environmentally, it's a big jump for them. They, it's a bigger building. Um, they have to find their way around, um, and things are a little bit um, different for them. So it's a it's a significant um, jump, fifth mm -hmm. to sixth. Yep, and I imagine just even the social piece of because we have a number of lower elementary schools, they're coming with this cohort of friends and peers they've had since kindergarten, and now they're with the whole district suddenly mm -hmm. in sixth grade, right? So right. it's it's just a lot more sixth graders than they were used to as fifth graders in right. terms of their class size. Um, so we know that, that that is sort of a big deal for families when they're going through that the first time. It's a big deal for students to think about. Um, we know too transitions are, can be challenging for students. So from a prevention perspective, doing, having a transition of any sort in a kid's life we know can be kind of a risky period, mostly because they are trying to figure out what are the expectations in this new place? Like what, you know, what do they think they know about middle school? What do they believe? Um, what are they trying to sort of live up to that may be the truth or it might be something that is not the truth um, mm -hmm. that they that they have these expectations that are kind of you know that the middle school has seven stories in a pool or you know yeah. so it could be something as simple as that right um, so let's talk about how this program kind of came to be in the first place. Um, so maybe we should start with you, Mr. Cancellari, about kind of what we'd been doing together. So Oasis was doing some collaboration with the DAW around medication safety. Right. Right. So that's sort of where we started to have these conversations. So I think when we first collaborated on the medication safety mm -hmm. um, that we traditionally had done with second grade yep. students, yep. we felt as though why not try it with fifth graders. Right. Um, and it was kind of a difficult balancing act because you want to be direct with them, mm -hmm. but you also don't want to scare them. Right. And I feel like that really parallels the way we approach this presentation as mm -hmm. well. Um, because we've collaborated so strongly with the middle school in terms of having, and I know we'll get into it, but yeah. visiting days mm -hmm. and uh, various orientations and uh, scavenger hunts and kids have had the experience to go to the middle school. Um, but being a former fifth grade teacher, like mm -hmm. I said, kids would come back um, when they first started sixth grade in September, October, mm -hmm. um, come back and visit at the Gibbons where I formerly taught and they were still a little surprised mm -hmm. by that leap that yeah. we had previously discussed. Hmm. Um, so I think really the origin of this whole presentation was really, you know, when they visit the middle school and they get the slice of pizza that everybody comes back mm -hmm. raving about, they learn about the after school clubs, they understand that the schedule is going to be a big shift. We were missing um, a little bit more of a direct approach to here are some of the real nitty gritty things you're going to face as a mm -hmm. sixth grader. Yep. You know, there's some different topics that there wasn't enough time with the other visiting days. Mm -hmm. So why not do it in their elementary school, in their comfort zone, mm -hmm. with their friends that they've been with for the last six years, right. um, but bring in new faces that they'll be seeing pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. What and about from your perspective? Yeah. When, uh, 
at the time that I was invited to collaborate, um, there were a couple of um, reasons that I immediately was kind of on board. So the first was the group. Mm -hmm. um, so um, Steph and Oasis um, and Rob, whatever you guys um, seem to be doing, um, at the heart of it is what's best for kids. Mm -hmm. um, so I would probably say yes to almost any invite that you guys sent my way. That's good. Um, and then, <laughs> you know, the school resource officers, um, uh, Stoughton Public Schools uh, nursing department, mm -hmm. um, it just seemed um, like a good endeavor no matter what the topic. Yeah. But then as Rob said, you know, we do do a lot of, and we have done for a number of years, a lot to assist um, in kind of the logistical transition from fifth to sixth. So mm -hmm. they come to the school well before their first day, they always have. They do a visit in June. Mm -hmm. Students do a visit in June when they're still in fifth grade. There's a night that we host for parents. Um, students come to that night too, that's called the showcase night. And then we do an orientation for grade six. The orientation is right before school opens. It has a lot more to do with like getting your homeroom assignment, mm -hmm. your locker assignment, your combination and the scavenger hunt. Right. Um, but when um, Rob had floated that the idea um, behind, to, you know, to me, that the idea behind this particular um, transitional assembly would be more of what, if you could boil it down to what is the significant difference that covers academics, uh, social adjustment, mm -hmm. emotional adjustment, um, and the, the idea was, was making good choices and being a little more personally uh, responsible, for your choices, um, then I kind of jumped on that yeah. because we don't really get the opportunity, even with all those days, right. we don't really get the opportunity to say, you know, if we could boil this down to one thing, kids, mm -hmm. this is really what it is. You're going right. to have some, some tougher choices to make, mm -hmm. uh, some choices to make on your own a little bit more than you ever have before. And it's about being aware of those choices and making good choices. Mm -hmm. um, so that was kind of a good opportunity too. Yep. Yeah. And I think that was, um, you know, pulling that planning team together and mm -hmm. having the, the Oasis folks, so it was myself and Jess, and then we had like a little team from the DAW, so mm -hmm. it was you and Kathy Bushenfeld, who's your guidance counselor down there, which was great, a great addition. From the middle school, we had Mr. Colantonio, we had um, Ms. Brookshire, who's the currently the eighth grade um, guidance counselor, so sort of knowing, um, so she will be the She'll sixth be, grade guidance, yep. so she will be the guidance counselor for the class that's coming in. Mm -hmm. um, so that was also, I think, really great. And then we had our two school resource officers, Officer Banda um, and Officer Isabel. And so that was also fantastic because I know they encounter sometimes when choices go a little south for students, sometimes they have to have interactions as well. So mm -hmm. I think it was a great group to really be thinking through what are the kinds of things, yeah, when we really boil it down to a short amount of time that we had with these students, what are the really critical things we want to be talking to them about? So actually, we have a clip um, of some of the some of the key messages I think that came through um, during our time. So we'll play that, and then we can dive a little deeper into some of um, the more nitty gritty of what else we talked about with the students. All right. All right. How do we know when to make the good choice or the bad choice? When we transition into middle school, and there are more kids, and there are more adults we're working with, and there are just things changing you're going to come across different scenarios where it's going to be much more difficult to make the right choice than it is right now as a fifth grader. So we're going to talk about some of those topics with you in the hopes that you will leave this cafeteria today better prepared for next year. Your choices, particularly as you become uh, a middle school student and then a high school student and beyond, they're going to start forming who you are as a person. So they are no longer sort of a random collection of impulses when you're a little kid growing up. They are now young adult choices that are going to start to make you who you are in this world. They're going to start to form other people's pin opinions about you. At the middle school level, they're going to make your life either difficult or not so difficult. Fun or not so fun. Before You're going to be in a room building with older kids that may have seen or done things that you might know about or that you might not know about and you're going to be hearing and being exposed to a lot more stuff than in elementary school. And one of the things that I would recommend um, is if you're not sure about something is to come and ask an adult. If you, you know, want to get to know me, I would be an adult that you could ask. You could ask one of your teachers, talk to your parents. But peer pressure, you might have some of your very good friends that might, might start to make some choices 
that you question, that you don't agree with. And my, my, my response to you is if it makes you feel a little uncomfortable, if you're questioning it, it's probably not okay. And the harder thing to do is to back away and make a different choice and make the right choice. And some kids are worried about losing friendships. A friend will say, well, if you're my friend, you'll do this. If you're my friend, you know, you'll let me copy your homework. If you're my friend, you'll cut class with me. If my friend, you know, we'll just like sneak into the bathroom during this period together. Well, in the back of your head, if you know it's wrong, it probably, if it feels wrong, it probably is wrong. And I, I would say back to them, well, if you're my friend, you wouldn't put me in this position to make this kind of a choice. So you really have to think about that kind of stuff too. K through five, you've had your training wheels on, right? In fifth grade, you're really ready for them to come off. You're like, get the, I'm ready. I'm ready to go, but you're not quite out of here. Next year, the training wheels come off. You're riding that bike on your own. You're in control of your own fate next year in your own day. So next year, if there's something going on with you, it's up to you to fix that. If you need to do better, it's up to you to do better. But if you're getting a C and you seem to be okay with it, okay, you're okay with getting a C. If that's not okay with you, it's gonna be up to you to ask for help. Advocate for yourself. Keep yourself organized. Do all your work. Do all of your assignments. Try your best. I've never met a middle school kid who, who tried hard and didn't do well. They don't exist. There's no such thing. Everybody should have one person in their life that they consider a trusted adult. And it could be any adult that you trust. It doesn't have to be a family member. It could be your teacher. It could be, it could be a, um, I don't know, a neighbor. And that person is the person that you can tell and they can do uh, what they need to do uh, adult-wise with do it. it. Okay. If you see something that does not look right, you say something. Someone's going to get beat up, you say something. Someone is picking on someone else, do not stand by and let that happen. Be Why I assembled this team, which is like the Stoughton Public Schools Avengers, if you will. We were assembled <laughs> today not to make you scared, but to make you more prepared. But I think every member of this team, Officer Isabel, Ms. Brookshire, Officer Bonda, Mr. Colantonio, they all really care about you. So you're leaving the DOS school, but you're going to another place where these people really care about you. You need to use those resources. Great. Awesome. So that was a little sort of piece snippets of some of what we talked about with the students. and. Um, so I would love to talk a little bit more about what some of the actual topics were. I think we identified five areas that we, we sort of dove into with the students. So um, if we can remember what they are, <laughs> let's, let's see if we can do it. We dove into um, drama and mm -hmm. rumors yep. was one topic. Uh, peer pressure, Yep. bullying, um, responsibility, responsibility. responsibility. Yep. independence, yep. kind of mm -hmm. all tied into one. Uh, and then the notion to see something um, and mm -hmm. say something. Yep. Um, there was some stuff about social media, right? Social and media, um, yes. sort of how to manage maybe being exposed to additional apps and, you know, kids might have more freedom on their devices than they were used to and what that might be like, mm -hmm. right? Um, and making good choices there as well and how sometimes a bad choice on the internet <laughs> sure, right. will still end up in your principal's office, yeah. mm -hmm. right? <laughs> or the guidance counselor's office. Or your office. guidance counselor's mm -hmm. office, right. So um, what do you think were some of the kind of other key points that maybe came up that, that didn't get shown in this video? So we were with the students for probably close to an hour, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, I, I, I just will say that I think that the whole presentation kind of really goes along with what the district is doing mm -hmm. in general. Kind of we've really brought to the attention of every staff member, every administrator, everybody we collaborate that social emotional being of our students mm -hmm. is a top priority. Right. Um, and we had an entire slide on you know academic independence, academic responsibility, um, but none of that matters if these kids are not in a place socially and emotionally that mm -hmm. they can attend to their academics. Um, so I think a lot of these topics, uh, they're important to discuss the drama versus rumors, especially the social media, because mm -hmm. I think the dynamic of being in middle school at least is far different than when I was in middle mm -hmm. school. It's mm -hmm. uh, w with the social media especially, there's, and I think that was a really important topic, and yeah. to have Officer Isabel and Officer Bonda touch upon it, mm -hmm. uh, two police resource officers, was crucial uh, because they see it. 
I mean, right. they see the really negative side effects of inappropriately using these um, programs and mm -hmm. platforms um, because we have this dynamic where we, I think there's a sense that these kids are more independent and mature and can mm -hmm. use these things, but in the same notion, they're extremely emotionally fragile mm -hmm. because they are just sixth graders. Right. So they hop onto these different platforms and they use them uh, as if they are adults mm -hmm. and yet the falling out proves otherwise. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think what was nice is um, from the middle school perspective with Miss Brookshire and mm -hmm. myself and the school resource officers, uh, both of whom have worked um, at the middle school, mm -hmm. it's nice to plant, you know, you're trying to plant some seeds right. with the fifth graders um, that they'll take with them next year when they're transitioning to sixth grade. And one of the seeds that's um, worth planting is definitely speaking from the um, the mistakes that middle school kids have made. Mm. And so social media, just to piggyback right. on what Rob said, that's a that's a perfect one because um, you know students are um, given access to um, and they start using um, social media apps before they really understand you know what they're using. And mm -hmm. um, so I think. Um, there was a moment in the assembly where I talked about how um, the apps are uh, companies. You know, mm -hmm. they're, right. they're trying to make money and they're, they're, um, they can kind of fool their consumers, their customers, um, so they think, make you think it's anonymous when it's really not. Um, so that's a great seed to plant mm -hmm. because, and, and then sharing some of the experiences, Mrs. Brookshire, um, her, her um, bit on this was very mm -hmm. compelling because mm -hmm. she, that's what she does every day, all day. Right. You know, students think that they're, um, they're going to make some comments on certain apps and no one's ever going to see those comments and for the guidance counselor to say I see them all mm -hmm. um, that's a good s seed to plant right um, and I don't think students are aware um, of how uh, predatory um, these companies can be with uh, 10 year olds 11 year olds mm -hmm. 12 year olds right. to try to get them to use their app um, how they can fool them and trick them and the psychology behind it um, so that's a good um, that's a good seed to plant and mm -hmm. at the same time for the parents who might feel um, overwhelmed, it's good to mm -hmm. also say, "Yep, you, we have this is 2019. We got this is this was not true for you in middle school, right. mom and dad. You were not mm -hmm. dealing with with social. You weren't dealing with social media apps and and likes right. and followers mm -hmm. and all this fake stuff that mm -hmm. kids think are so important mm -hmm. and Instagram and images and all that stuff. But you were dealing with peer pressure, That's and right. that pops up. Yep. You right. were dealing with just being mean and." Mm -hmm. the, f the social fallout of being mean. There right. are those threads that are still what makes middle school tough in mm -hmm. 2019 and right. 1989 and right. 1979. Right. Yep. Right. That's true, right. Yeah. And I think that I think that whole idea of planting some of these seeds mm. it sort of also goes back to something that we heard Ms. Brookshire say in that first set of clips where it was sort of, if it feels wrong, maybe it is wrong or you should check that with a grown-up right. and so even Same just sort of yeah saying mm -hmm. these things to the students here might it might provide more opportunities where they go wait a minute I, I like there's an inkling of something I thought I, I remember hearing something when I was in that assembly now it doesn't feel so right let me go check that with one of these uh, trusted adults that now I've been introduced to right. in an assembly like this you know now I know some of these faces I know who I can talk to um, it doesn't seem as scary mm -hmm. to try to you know, have a conversation. So I think that that's really important. Um, but I think you you hit on something else. So um, one of the things I think that hasn't changed a lot too is this idea of like students, you know, sometimes students are mean to each other. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's bullying. Mm -hmm. A lot of times it's not bullying. Um, and maybe to talk a little bit about that distinction, because I know that can be challenging for parents too, because that word bullying is a very charged word. So maybe it, it's probably worth repeating again a little bit here on the show, just what the difference is between mean and bullying because I think you did that piece and explained it really well yeah so the um, and that is one of those seeds that we that we plant um, a lot mm -hmm. for younger kids so you know with the um, bullying uh, intervention and prevention requirements in Massachusetts which are wonderful um, and all these districts have developed these um, plans they're mandated to develop these plans it's it's been great it's been a wonderful thing and certainly um, it's helped to address um, true true bullying in Massachusetts, so that's a wonderful thing. Mm -hmm. It's also, you know, kind of become a word that is used an awful lot mm -hmm. um, and in a, in a way that I think is different than um, before all the legislation. I, I feel like bullying wasn't a, an overused word, but um, so making that distinction with students is important, and so at the assembly, 
um, just try to plant that seed nice and early, the difference between bullying mm -hmm. and, you know, social cruelty. So right. I find that kids will often describe sort of anything that doesn't go their way as bullying. Right. And they'll go from, you know, mean to bully right away. So mm -hmm. um, I try to use the example of, um, you know, if kids are being mean, um, they're not bullying. Um, and um, they, they might, they're being mean and we want to address that meanness because meanness unchecked can turn into bullying. Um, but we try, I tried to kind of just talk about the definition of bullying in Massachusetts, which, which is it's targeted, um, it's intentionally meant to cause harm mm -hmm. to the target, either physical um, or emotional harm. It's repeated, and that's the criteria that mm -hmm. definitely is most often not met mm -hmm. um, in my school uh, right. with my age group. Um, I'm sure that's probably true across the board. Um, and so to kind of talk about those things, but also to identify those single incidents of social cruelty as the behavior that might lead to bullying mm -hmm. if you don't kind of examine it, reflect on it, change it, fix it, um, and all that stuff. So mm -hmm. um, that was, um, I think, one of the good points made yep. uh, for the assembly yep. too. Yeah. And Great. I think what you brought up too was, uh, you know, having this assembly, not having it put on by just their building principal mm -hmm. and Mrs. Right. Bushenfeld. The collabor collaboration piece was huge because, mm -hmm. I mean, companies will come out and do you can pay for a company to come out and do an assembly on bullying. Mm -hmm. You can come to do an assembly on the transition to middle school. They, right. There are companies that do this. But what would I thought was critical is that they will see Mr. Colantonio right. Antonio come September. Mm -hmm. They'll see Ms. Brookshire yep. come September. They'll mm -hmm. see Officer Isabel, Officer Bonda. Mm -hmm. um, and if even one kid leaves the assembly and decides to not make a bad decision, Mm -hmm. You know, right. because re reflecting upon this presentation, then everything was worth it. Right. Um, but I think hearing it from the people they'll be working with, that that is a significant difference from a, a more organic approach to yep. doing it. Yeah, I, I think that is really great and for students to be able to identify those faces. These are the caring adults in this new building that I will be entering. Some right. of the caring adults, you know, and that they talked about other adults in the building too who will be there for you. and. So I think that that's huge. Why don't we, I know we have a quick clip of some students um, talking about their experience with this um, assembly. So why don't we roll that? People know what you're like typing on social media and on Xbox and things like that. So like you shouldn't be doing anything inappropriate or, or something that will get you in trouble. Well, kids should know to make good choices because if they make any bad choices, then they know that they'll be in trouble because there's always consequences with what you do. Sometimes there could be good consequences or there could be like really bad ones. Great. So that was from two of our students who will now be at the middle school come yeah. the fall, which is terrific. So in our last few minutes, let's talk a little bit about how this program fits into sort of, we, allude, we alluded to this a little bit earlier, the um, all of the other work that's happening with the transition for fifth to sixth grade and sort of where we see this going in the future because it was a pilot this year, it only happened at the DAW mm -hmm. um, and sort of what our hopes are for this program, you know, next year and beyond. I, I would love to see this collaboration, you know, go into the other elementary schools mm -hmm. because what I found after was that the students that left the cafeteria did have the perfect balance of being a little scared mm -hmm. and even more prepared. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I think it, it, again, teaching fifth grade, was, every day conversation was when you get to sixth grade, you're going to have a whole different grading system. You know, you're, if you don't turn in your homework, it, it's a humongous part of your final grade. And even if you say that every day, mm -hmm. it, you know, to the one assembly, I think, really brought it to the forefront of all of these kids' minds. Mm -hmm. And I think that would benefit fifth graders from across the entire district. Yep. Because um, right. they certainly talked about it. Mm -hmm. They certainly, you know, with their teachers when they came back up to the classroom. And you did, there was a letter that went home to parents too. So part yep. of this, the intention was, you know, here's another opportunity. These are the kinds of things we're going to be talking about with your child. Please, you know, take this as an opportunity to have these conversations in your own house. Yep, parents got mm -hmm. a letter uh, with the ability to opt out mm -hmm. of the presentation if they wanted to. But I think um, with the, you know, diversity um, across the entire district, some of these topics would not be touched upon mm -hmm. otherwise mm -hmm. um, right. if we weren't the ones doing it. And I think a lot of the parents' feedback I received mm -hmm. was uh, highly appreciative of that, of us taking on the role beyond teaching math, English, reading, mm -hmm. writing. Uh, we went above that and kind of did this preparation piece, yep. which um, 
you know, a lot of positive feedback is what I received at the elementary school. Awesome. Yeah, right. and from my perspective, I think it, would, it was great to do it at the DAW, mm -hmm. um, and it would be nice to do it with um, fifth graders across the district. Yep. Um, and to somehow add the choices presentation um, into the formal transition mm -hmm. work that we do from fifth to sixth grade. Yep. Um, so there's lots of opportunities to do that. Um, you know, there's the June visits, but I liked coming down to the yeah, um, like elementary having, school. Yeah. I have to say that you know, when kids come up to um, the middle school in fifth grade, it's great, um, mm -hmm. but it's really a lot more about like, like seeing the building and, and walking through the lunch line. And um, I, I suppose we could sort of add it there, but there, I felt like there was something about coming to the DAW mm -hmm. um, and doing the presentation there. Um, that might have made a little bit more of an impact mm -hmm. uh, maybe than adding it to the day right. where they're also finding their way around right. and doing the lunch line and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. Which I imagine is uh, itself also just overwhelming anyway yep. as a student who's trying to, you're trying to learn, you have to know all those logistical pieces too, so to try to then have the sort of social emotional piece, maybe it does work better. It, se it did seem to work really well that day at the DAW, yeah. so yeah, I also would love to see us be able to replicate this, and um, and I think that the other elementary school principals are interested in this. I know oh, yeah. from early conversations when we talked about the fact that we were going to do this in your school, people seemed excited and sort of like, okay, we can't wait to hear what happens, you right. know. Um, and if it's great, and we, you know, we imagine that it would be, and I think it was that yep. this is something we could continue to sort of roll out across the district and offer to all of our fifth graders, and we'll see how it impacts that group of sixth graders, I guess, mm -hmm. come the fall if they. If there's anything different about them, it'll be sort of interesting to see. Absolutely. You know that they were, these were your dog kids, right? Yeah. Right. And they came in extra prepared. Yeah. So any last thoughts in our final, like, half a minute here on the show that you all want to add about the program or anything else you want to say to our viewers at home? Yeah. I, uh, one of the things that I um, say, I often say at the, I, I think I said it at the assembly of the DAW, and I say it when we do our showcase night in our, um, our other transition uh, meetings for fifth graders is uh, when I went to middle school, um, my first day of sixth grade was um, you just showed up to sixth grade mm -hmm. and you were not prepared and you, you know, your homeroom teacher would yell your last name, you would find that adult in the chaotic cafeteria. Um, so I think this work that we do for the transition is a lot different than I remember it when I was in middle school um, and it's really great. Um, and I think that um, in Stoughton, kids are um, really prepped to go to sixth grade before their first day of sixth grade. Um, and so if this um, added presentation kind of helps with that, uh, that's fantastic. Excellent. Well, thank you both so much for coming on the show. Thank and, you. Um, and have a great us. summer. Right. You too. All right. Thanks.